we're back. This is the Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives on Tuesday, March 9th. We are taking up H106, our uh, Bill on Community Schools, um, Draft 8.2. And we're going to do a, you know, a walkthrough and any markup and see if we're ready to vote or amend. So, Tim Damaray, you have the floor. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me bring up this bill. Um, here we go. Okay. So for the record, uh, Jim Damory, let's console. We are walking through draft 8.2 of your uh, committee amendment to H106. Um, so uh, just to walk through high level again, the bill. Uh, there are a few changes here to, to highlight as we go. Um, so findings um, are have been enhanced a bit by citations to source material. Um, so that's the change changes that are here from last time. So we have like references to the National Center for Education Stats uh, giving uh, information. Um, uh, and then we have a number of further citations in here as we go, but I won't read through these findings. I think we've been through them a number of times. Changes of a few words here. Um, their dreams, instead of his, her dreams. Coordination um, uh, here. And uh, so very few changes from what you've seen before. So let me get through these unless you've got questions about them. No, we've seen the findings a bit, so. What's that? We've seen the findings a bit, so yeah, move yeah. on. Um, the purpose, of course, is important uh, to support a demonstration grant program for the implementation of community school programs uh, that provides students with equitable access to high quality ed education. Um, the grant program, we have this definition of uh, community school coordinator, which is uh, key here. Um, and so again, it's a four or part-time staff member serving in an eligible school or school district or SU with an eligible school um, and appointed in accordance with Vermont law uh, and is responsible for the identification, implementation and coordination of a community school program. Um, subject again to the operational and reporting structure of the employer. And then we have, have a definition of, of a community school program. It's the four pillars we've talked about a number of times, so I'll go through them in detail. Um, so integrated student supports, uh, expanded and enriched learning time and opportunities. And we changed this to make clear that it, it's a may, not a shall, in terms of what it, ha what it can include. And then active family and community engagement. Again, we make clear that it's a, it's a may and a shall in terms of what they uh, can do. Um, and then uh, collaborative leadership and practices, um, which at minimum have um, these factors here, monthly tier system of supports and a coordinate, coordinator and a rep of families. Um, and then may include a number of things here. Um, the eligible applicant is either a school district uh, or at an SU with an eligible school. And eligible school is a school that has a student body where at least 40% of students are eligible for a free or reduced price lunch um, or has been identified for comprehensive or equity support. Uh, intervention or other uh, or um, or otherwise identified by the state as in need of additional support. Um, then we've got the grant. Um, the grant program is up to one hundred ten thousand um, for three years for each eligible applicant, uh, and that money is to be used to hire a community school coordinator to develop and implement um, a community school program or uh, designate a community school coordinator from existing personnel and uh, 
uh, augment uh, work already being performed to develop you know, implement a community school program. And then grant administration. So the secretary will administer the program, uh, develop the application, determine the grant amounts, and provide grant funding um, on each of uh, three years, 22, 23, 24. Um, and curious about that. I'm gonna pause right there for a minute and just ask whether we mean to say 21, 22, 23. Yes. Yeah, this has been here for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And then um, again, uh, second and third year grant funding can be denied or reduced if there's been insufficient progress toward developing and implementing the um, program. Um, the agency will, will inform and provide technical support to. Um, SUs um, and um, the use of funding is again uh, to hire the coordinator uh, or uh, to um, um, designate a, a coordinator from existing personnel and I've met the work being performed already. Uh, and if they hire uh, a, co a coordinator, then in the first year of funding, that coordinator will uh, conduct the needs and, and assets assessment of the school um, and an action plan. And during the second and third years of funding, they will implement that action plan. Uh, at the end of each of the three years of, of grant funding, um, the, um, there'll be an evaluation by AOE. Um, and then uh, on or before um, December 15th of 23 and 25, the agency shall report to you and the governor on the impact of the program. Um, and the report will be made publicly available. And I see a raised hand. Representative James. Thank you. Um, Jim, I think those report back dates um, need to change when we shift the dates uh, both above and below. I think we were intending to hear from folks after the first year and after the final year. Okay, yeah. So I think that would be 20, 21 and 23. I think it would be 22, right? 22. Um, 22 and then 20, Yeah, 24. 24, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 22 and 24. It's our calendars um, and our FYs. <laughs> yeah. And then the preparation is, is 1.529 million um, from federal funds um, that covers the three years and these states have to change to 21, 22, and 23. So we've got three areas here we have to have date changes, uh, which I'll take care of. Um, and that's it, the effective date is on passage. Okay, questions, comments? Um, Representative James. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, to clarify, or I, I guess explain to folks that the shift in the dates is um, our attempt, and this will have to go on over to APROPS, but the shift in the dates is our attempt to make sure that we capture um, federal funds to fund all three years of the grant program so that none of this falls onto the ed fund. Thank you. Representative Coupley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Kath, thanks for the explanation. My concern is after the three years, it will go to the ed fund. And, and particularly not knowing how many communities will actually, or how many districts or supervisory unions will be applying for this program is of great concern to me. Um, Chair Webb, may I, may I respond or? Mm -hmm. 
Great. So um, Representative Coopley, thank you. I, I know that's been a concern of yours. Um, how I'm thinking about this is uh, as sort of an extraordinary opportunity to use one-time federal funds uh, to fund a program that as it's currently written in the bill ends in three years. Um, so we will have, have the chance to fund, um, I think we envisioned it as 10 pilot or demonstration programs across the state. Um, when those pilot programs are done three years from now, um, we'll have a report back where the legislature of, of that time will have a report back from AOE to see um, how those programs fared and what they learned. And I think that it would be a, a future legislature, in my opinion, that would decide whether or not the program has value and would continue. If it is gonna continue, um, I'm not necessarily certain that it would fall onto the Ed Fund. Um, you know, some of the schools that um, liked the program and enjoyed the program, um, I suppose could continue it in their budget if they wanted to, but that's not mandatory. Um, so to me, the sort of the unique opportunity of this program is that we have the opportunity to tap into federal funds to give you know, 10 or 12 schools a chance to try, to try a three-year program that has a specific endpoint. So it, you know, it doesn't bind future legislatures to continue funding the program and nothing about this indicates that it simply rolls into the Ed Fund budget. And you, you remember, and, uh, uh, Representative Brady. Thank you, Chair Webb. I, I was just gonna add that I fully understand those concerns and we had a good, we had good discussion about them too in the small working group meetings and, um, and as a school board member, I understand them very well. I, um, I think that the use of federal funds is critical and I also i am hopeful that, you know, we're going to have a pretty interesting report in three years about what's gone on, about the partnerships and about the sort of folks who have been engaged in this and that in many ways there are cost savings or there are new opportunities coming into communities because of this um, that in the end actually are, are more efficient economically. And I will say super pie in the sky, first time naivete here, that we might be talking more about, about general fund. I think of, um, of Doug Racine's testimony that I thought was quite compelling, but a lot of the work of the community schools is not strictly education. It's human services work, um, it's poverty work, it's things that run the gamut and maybe it forces a larger conversation about, um, about that and general funds and, and who's, you know, understanding it's all still our same, um, you know, it's the same coffers, but I do think that there's a potential that um, if this goes well, we could be having some different conversations in a couple of years. <clears throat> so it allows them, it gives them some money to be able to have that conversation. It's not necessarily setting up the program yet, but they might say, wow, there are all these C21 after school funds that we could use. Wow, we have some Medicaid dollars. Maybe we could be doing using that for, for something. It's not actually implementing the program. No, it could, it could be. <laughs> Representative James. Yeah, um, I'd love to hear from Colin on this since it's something we, we talked about um, and that he may be able to shed a little bit more light on. But one of the things that I found interesting too was um, in our testimony from the folks at the Learning Policy Institute who work with um, community schools all over the country, I remember her saying that many community schools, as they get up and running, develop additional funding streams. Um, so in addition to developing programs that can tap into federal funds like 21C for after school, um, they uh, develop funding relationships with community partners. Um, they start developing programs that might be grant funded. They get uh, businesses in town to start uh, getting engaged and, you know, donating or serving as partners. And um, so they develop these additional uh, revenue streams that sort of uh, have that sustainability in mind. And if, if I were a community schools coordinator um, who were hired under this program, you know, having read the bill and knowing that this is a three-year program with a discrete endpoint, 
I would certainly be putting a lot of time and effort and thought into thinking about long-term sustainability and trying to tap into those outside funding streams. I mean, I'd, I'd be spending a lot of time on that. And it's my assumption that other schools will be too, because I think it's really built into the model. I think one of the things that folks will first start doing is looking at how other schools do it. And around the country, other schools uh, look out for um, federal, private, philanthropic, um, government, and business support for these kinds of programs. Representative Williams. I thought I took my hand down. <laughs> the reason I had it up, um, pretty much Representative James uh, kind of went there. I have expressed that, that I'm excited about this bill. I also have my concerns for, uh, you know, my district and how I feel they want me to vote. Um, wouldn't it be nice? And I know it's it's a pipe dream that we could have this bill that at the end of the three years it doesn't tap into the education fund. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee, and that's that's where I have to hold the reins back a little bit, sadly. That's, of course, a community decision. Your community would be deciding that. Right. And I've had conversations with my community. So, so they can kind of know. <laughs> well, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. OK. Um, maybe we could hear something from the field, superintendents, teachers. Do you have any thoughts on how this would go? I see Colin Robinson. Yes, thanks, Chair Webb, um, and thanks for the committee's work on this. I think, you know, one of the things that you all heard from national organizations that work on this is that there is a significant return on in investment. Um, I think it was in New Mexico, sort of a seven to one um, investment that you saw in this context. I think the other thing to remember is that our schools are already providing significant support to students and families. And that, you know, when we're really um, looking to address this, what we're talking about is looking for opportunities for efficiency. So uh, I'm going to have to pause there. I apologize. You might hear some uh, my coworker in the background providing some commentary. We love that. That's we love that in our committee. <laughs> um, Representative Williams, did, is that no? Okay. Um, Let's see. Feel free to come back to um, Jay Nichols from Principles. Your principals would be looking at this. What would they? What is their response? Would you say? I think they're they're supportive of the of the general concept. I do think down the road there is the worry about Ed Fund piece, and that maybe there should be some type of a categorical aid or this should come from more on the H AHS side because much of this is mental health type related. Um, but I think the idea of trying to do this through, through one-time money uh, certainly makes sense as a, as a star. I, again, I look at this as almost like a, I guess we don't want to use the word pilot anymore, right? Kathleen, it's, uh, I can't remember what it is, demonstration project or something. Demonstration grant. Demonstration grant. So I'm, I'm, I'm generally in support of it conceptually. I uh, just, you know, I may change my mind three years from now if it's going to impact budgets and we have to look at other, you know, is there programming that gets cut or whatever. But if we can find a way to fund it down the road, I think we're going to have to move more and more in this way as a society anyway. And we have since the 1970s, right? You know, there's less nuclear families, there's less uh, church involvement for kids and programs like that. So schools are doing much and much more of that type of stuff. So, I, you know, with doctors and dentists and mental health program. And I think that's going to continue. I think that's just the way it's going to be. Um, Representative Austin. Yes, I just, um, just make sure. okay, just wanted to say that um, I, I feel like in order for a student to be able to access instruction, you know, they have to be fed, they have to uh, feel safe, um, their parents, um, you know, need to be in a place where they can uh, support their child. And I feel like it, it's very hard having worked in a school 
uh, to see parents struggle to get their children these services. Um, they're either working, they don't have transportation. Um, and I, I've always thought how wonderful it would be if in a school, parents could access uh, a mental health worker or tech support um, to get services or dental care or health care, um, because I think it would help their children be more present for instruction. Um, so I'm really supportive of this. I, I think it will um, address a lot of needs of families who are working hard, uh, but really just don't have the time to help their children access the opportunities that other children do have. You know, other uh, children have um, more access to opportunities. And I think this would equalize things for children. And we are sending some federal funds back. We're going to be hearing a bit about federal funds on Thursday that are available. Um, Colin, did you have something more to say? Colin Robinson? I'll attempt to add some uh, <laughs> other comments, and I do apologize. Um, so my other points, and I think you heard this in the testimony from the folks from Winooski, is that they really built out a model that drew in resources from other sources. And, um, and I think one of the other promises of this is that we know that schools are already working to try and support students and families in all the ways that you've talked about. And the point I was trying to make it uh, before I had to hop off was that I think there actually could be, we could potentially find some efficiency in this model. Whereas right now there could be a bit of a, a scattershot approach to figuring out how to support students and families. And when you have one individual whose sole focus and mission is to try and build around those supports, there, with that can come opportunities for efficiency and opportunities for creative partnerships that haven't been explored before that ultimately bear significant fruit in, to represent Boston's points, students being able to access their learning, which ultimately gets to all the outcomes that your committee has spent so much time focusing on as well. Thank you. Um, Jeff Francis, superintendents. Hi, is my audio okay? Yes. Um, when we first testified on this bill, <clears throat> we indicated that we thought it would be taken up in the second half of the biennium. Um, I've come around in terms of my thinking to the fact that th there may be no better time than right now. And I think that the concerns that have been raised about sustainability have validity, but I would also point out that um, with the variability that we have in our education delivery system in Vermont, a demonstration project about how to provide education more holistically on a community to community basis will have a lot of value. So that's the first thing that I would say. I also think that the fiscal um, implications are going to be pretty well understood in terms of cost and benefit from the early days of this initiation. And this grant program funds a person, presumably, or existing staff who will focus on um, the approach that is identified in the bill. Um, but districts presumably are going to start working with partners immediately and expanding services immediately. So I don't think that there's a cliff at the end of this program. I think that um, the districts that provide the demonstrations and turn into this model are going to have a lot of experience over three years with regard to how to be successful in the model. That's what a demonstration project is. I would also say that with the amount of money that's going to be provided by the grant, which is roughly equivalent to one staff person. And this is not something that, you know, I, I like to have to say, but with declines in enrollment in some schools in Vermont, you don't um, reduce the need for the kinds of approaches that this demonstration project will support but there is going to be flexibility around how you deploy your personnel. 
So we right now in Vermont have the lowest adult to student ratio in the country. Um, and with enrollment still declining, there is gonna be an opportunity for monetary savings as districts learn about the efficacy of the type of approach that is supported by this demonstration project. So even though our associations were compelled to talk about the fact that it's a grant program that ends after three years, I also, from my vantage point at the Superintendents Association, understand that districts are gonna have flexibility with regard to their own funding models. So I, I, I think that, um, that, you know, as a demonstration project with the, the funds that you presume to be available, with the importance as a society of wrapping our, ourselves and our, our schools around um, kids and communities, this is actually a, a, a very exciting initiative um, and one that uh, I'll be watching to make sure, you know, to, to understand how it works. And I think that if you end up um, funding, say, 10 districts in an initiative like this, then I think that they'll, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. I think that there will be 40 other districts watching what happens with these 10, because I think that they'll want to see what the successes are, what they can learn. So I, you know, for the investment you're going to make and the enthusiasm you're going to generate, uh, I think this is something that the general assembly would be well advised to move forward with. Representative Brady. I just want to add real briefly to that that point, Jeff. I think it hopefully is also going to create some excitement and awareness among organizations, services on how to better get into the schools to deliver. Um, you know, it, it it might push us along for some of those um, from from that side, not just the schools bringing them in, but those coming in and seeing like, oh wow, we can actually be more efficient, or we can reach more families, we can reach more parents this way. So it may push some nonprofits, some of the service agencies, etc. <laughs> I agree with that entirely. Holly Morehouse is ready to go with after school. <laughs> okay. Um, any changes anybody needs to this bill at this point to support it? Um, then I will I'll entertain a motion to accept 106 with I'll the move changes, but I'll move it. Some of, okay, yeah. Representative Austin's moved. There are a couple of changes in this. It would be 9.1, 9.1. It's 9.1, okay. Yep. Yep. Thank you. And second. Second, thank you. That was Jay Hooper, correct? Yeah. I actually don't even think I need a second, but why not, right? We don't technically need one. But don't it's try. fun to have. We just you know, you see the support is emphasize so, the process. So, um, discussion. Any further discussion? And the clerk shall commence to call the roll. Representative Arison. I vote yes. Representative Austin. Muted. Sorry, yes. Representative Brady. Yes. Representative Brown. Yes. Representative Conlon. Yes. Representative Kupali. There he is. No. Representative Hooper. Yes. <laughs> Representative James. Yes. Representative Tooth. No. Representative Williams. I wish it were an easy answer, but based on my heart and based on what I just heard from the professionals, and 
hoping that I'm here in three years to see how this turns out, because you know I do not want to raise taxes for my people. I'm going to vote yes. That is, um, oh, sorry, Chair Webb. <laughs> yes. All right, that is nine, nine, two, zero. All right. Amazing work, committee. Representative Williams, I feel very lucky to have you on our committee. Your voice We're incredibly fortunate. Your, your voice is important. Thank you. Yeah. So helpful to the small meetings and the process of this. And it's been a really a great learning experience for me in just bipartisanship and community representation. And so, yeah, I, I have to wholeheartedly second that and so appreciate it. Thank you. So we have just moved three bills. Um, Representative James, that will be uh, yours. Got it. You're, you're the lead. Um, I will put out the um, construction bill because it's a committee bill, so my name will go on that. And uh, Representative Austin, I think I'm going to start the um, literacy bill. Um, and we'll, we'll find places for people in that. Um, wow, amazing work committee. We'll see what's gonna happen when it goes up to the money committees. <laughs> but, uh, Kate, question, question on that. Yeah. Um, that will require us to be following those bills up there yes. as well. And to yes. be presenting and, yes. and testifying. Right, so we will, um, I, I'm gonna ask, um, Representative Arison will eventually be um, the lead on that, but the way the committee process, the committee bill goes is it goes there, it gets a number. Um, as the chair, I do it, but when it comes to presenting it on the floor and when we get it out of the committees, um, Representative Arison, that would be you and, and um, which Representative Coopley uh, thought would be good. And maybe um, Representative Conlon could just be back up too. And I'll work out the other other ones. I, I think um, Representative Arison, you may be able to just do that on your own. Um, let, let me let me actually think back inside my head and not outside here. <laughs> and I'll, I'll sort that out. So I think with that, we can go off live.